More than 111 million people watched the Super Bowl on Sunday, and as we reported, Pope Francis even sent a video message. Let's take a look. Al participar del deporte, somos capaces de ir más allá del propio interés personal. And that got me thinking. Is the rise of sports with our culture a sign of the secularization of the larger society. Joining us now is Chad Pecknold, associate professor with Catholic University and sports agent Doug Eldridge, who is managing partner with DLE Agency. Gentlemen, welcome. Thanks for having us. I'm not a really big sports fan, but this got me thinking, it really did. And I, the message that was played, Chad, to 70,000 people inside the stadium, isn't there some irony about this here? Sports are becoming more of a spectacle, more prevalent, but new American religion in attendance is going down. Well, it's interesting, Lauren. We, we hear these stories about a kind of post-Christian America, right. kind of decline, Pew studies, et cetera. Um, and yet here we are at the largest sporting event in, in, in the American year and the Pope speaking. Okay, the, but I would say that's an anomaly, right? And Doug, where do you think religion fits into sports? Do you agree with this premise that maybe sports is becoming our new religion? I would never equate the two because clearly they're not on the same level. Clearly. But I would say, as I've said to you before, sports and within, within it athletics and, and, and athletes have a larger place and platform in American society than they ever have in history. And religion is inextricably intertwined into the daily life and practices of these athletes. So by extension, I believe it's a positive for religion that these athletes are bringing that message to the field, to the court, to the track, and with it, these stadiums of 70 and 80,000 fans. So don't you, isn't there, is there, I'm asking, is there, I'm not, no, not supposed here any um, information that shows that people the more sports oriented they are the more they spend Sundays with football the less they go to church I mean in a sense what you see in football are the kind of standard uh, views that the church holds about learning virtues acquiring virtue you know training discipline um, around a common end that's how we learn natural virtues and that fits together with the faith the faith elevates our natural virtues and uh, directs them towards God and so they're not in competition with each other they can become but if they become in competition with each other if sports somehow become someone's church you're kind of disordering sports well, but Doug, Tom Brady and his mother are praying. You've got people, Tim Tebow, who's very religious. But what about the ones you don't hear about? I, it seemed, I, I'm trying to find a, a hook here and really explore this. Is it that there are few examples of people who are very devout and the rest not so much within the community? I think it is literally underfoot and you don't have to trip over it to know that it's there. So many of our clients, and, and I'm so fortunate to represent the broader religious spectrum in terms of our client base, from Catholic to Christian to Muslim to Jew, and irrespective of their denomination, the, the singular point of commonality that they all share is the devout practice of their faith. Uh, and I would be the first to tell you, though, that even on, even on Sundays with our NFL okay. clients or with our all summer right. and winter Olympians who spend a large portion of the year traveling around the world and can't sit in that second pew, they would be the first to tell you that our faith and our spirituality comes from the inside out. And on the Sundays that we can't be in mass or can't be in service, we bring the scripture and we bring our spirituality and we bring our unwavering faith with us. And I would share one small vignette. Please. One of our, one of our winter Olympians, Alexa Kinnearum, who a figure skater, they're, they're bound for Pyeongchang here in a year. Fabulous. She recently penned that she's gone through some tremendous health challenges and she recently penned an article and she said, you know what, it was when my body was at its weakest that my faith was at its strongest. Mm -hmm. And I feel as though that one soundbite is so emblematic of the broader professional sports landscape. You don't need the, the stalwart Stonehenge examples of the Tim Tebow's who are, are wonderful right. representatives of And that's what I was faith. getting to is it's, that you have that big example. It's throughout. Example. It's pervasive. You do think it's throughout. All right, let's move to the Super Bowl halftime. So maybe you're saying here on the field you have a lot of devout athletes or a lot of religions, but Chad, you just recently wrote um, an article about Lady Gaga's performance, and let's see if we can put it up here. What is unusual is the way she invokes God's name and even classic Christian themes throughout her performances. But you add this, the spectacle which invokes God's name without thinking very clearly about the truth of the matter. So I think that you're talking about one of the performers at the Super Bowl. If we look at Beyonce last year, sure. we know that that was a very inappropriate for many family audiences. She blew the power out Half in New Orleans. <laughs> right, right. I was there for that. The, that, the, 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 that was the arena was Oh, black. I remember yeah. that. I remember that. 
so uh, my question to you is where has society gone with with this halftime show and all these commercials that are also seemingly very political well it's interesting because we did see a lot of commercials that were strongly in favor of progressive politics and it did alienate a lot of people and I think uh, that's something the sponsors should think about I think there's there are negatives to sports and a lot of the negatives that come from sports have to do with money and generating money and but they also have to do with political ideology the great thing about sports is it gathers us together around common goods. The bad thing about sports is when the politics that are so divisive come and rip out the ground from beneath you, as Lady Gaga kind of did. She, she began with a great patriotic open, you know, one God nation bless. under God. Right, right. right? one then... nation under God. That's a good thing. That's what the country believes in, is a common good that's ordered to the highest good, namely God. But then comes the performance where we're all about identity politics that's so divisive. And, and this is something where there's an internal contradiction uh, that just doesn't hang together. All right. Chad Pecknold, thank you so much, Catholic University. Doug Eldridge, DLE Agency. We could talk about this for a whole segment, a whole Certainly. half hour. Maybe we'll do that. Halftime show. Halftime show. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you so much.